welcome you all to this YouTube channel. And today we want to learn together how we can implement Spanish tree protocol in a switched network environment. If you have a purely based um, switch network or you have more than um, enough a considerable number of switches on your network, then you must consider implementing STP in such environments. As we are all aware, STP provides um, a loop-free network, particularly at the layer 2 level, and also ensuring that there is redundancy. For the purpose of this video, we'll be making use of MicroTIC devices to implement STP. And um, in addition, there is an enhanced version of STP known as our STP, which is Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol. Um, two major differences between STP and RSTP is that uh, RSTP converges faster than STP. In other words, if you have like a, a disconnection or a network failure, the, the number of seconds it will take RSTP to bring back your network automatically is shorter when you compare it to that of uh, the traditional STP. Also, the number of um, the condition of your ports, the port states of RSTP is fewer when compared to STP. RSTP has three while STP has um, five. For RSTP, the port states are forward, len, and discard. While for STP, which is five, we have um, forward, listen, len, block, and um, disable. To implement any of the two, RSTP or STP, on your network, you have to choose um, a root bridge. And there are three parameters that you need to familiarize yourself with when you want to implement this protocol in a switched network. And the three parameters are the bridge priority, that is the priority of the bridge, the priority of the ports, and the port path cost. So simplify what I've just said, looking at our screen, um, switch one will be our root bridge. While um, switch one will be our root bridge, and the congr major congregation that we have in our root bridge is um, the priority of the bridge and the priority of the port, bridge priority and port priority. Because we're having a kind of end-to-end -end, uh, connectivity that is from switch one to switch four, we want traffic to flow from switch one, passing through either switch two or switch three to switch four. So we have made, um, for the purpose of repetition, we have made our switch one to be the root bridge. And the parameters that we need to configure on the root bridge are two, the bridge priority and the port priority. Now for switch four, which is the end-to-end -end connect, which is the end-to-end -end, um, connection to switch one, only one configuration that we need to be, we need to familiarize our, ourselves with, and that is um, the port path cost. The port path cost. Remember three parameters that you need to familiarize yourself with. When you are setting up RSTP in a switch network, number one, the priority of the bridge that is to be done on the root bridge. Number two, the priority of the ports that is also to be done on the root bridge. And number three, the port path cost that will be done on the end to end um, device to your root bridge. So we start our configuration from switch one. And for you to choose a root bridge, you must make the bridge priority to be to be of the lowest value in that particular network. So how do we go about that? We click on bridge, launching your uh, micro device through your main box, click on bridge, then add. You can leave the name as default, or you can change it to a desired name. I'll be leaving it as default um, in this lab. So you click on this tab, STP. You can see that by default, RSTP has been enabled. So micro makes your configuration faster by enabling certain features that they know that it will enhance your network. So this is the priority that we need to change. Our The priority of the bridge is in hexadecimal value. So I'm reducing this one to 1,000. So for other bridges or other switches on our network, they will need to have a higher value than this. So apply and OK. So I go to switch 2 and repeat the same process. But in this case, I'll be making the priority to be higher than that of uh, bridge one, I mean switch one. So we made down to be 1,000, let's call this one 2,000. Let's go to switch three, we make it 3,000.
and go to switch four by making it um, four thousand. So with this value being set, your bridge one or switch one is automatically your root bridge. Then the next step is the port priority. This will also be done on the root bridge. So we we'll go to ports on that bridge. We we'll click add. Let's reconfirm the ports that I want to add. We are adding port two, port four, port three, and port five. Two so under bridge one. Then go to the STP tab. This is where you set the port priority. Here it is eighty. I can decide to change it to twenty here. Give other parameters as default, apply, OK. Then the next is port 4. Let me just copy. Port 4. Let me change it to 80. Two, four, three, five. Then port three, port five. Port three, at three under bridge one. Let's make it forty. Port five. Make it fifty. Let's see port five under bridge one. You can see that the role of the ports, of all the ports for your root bridge is always designated. Designated ports. So we we'll move on to we are through with all the configuration that we need to do to ensure um, the complete functionality of RSTP on switch one. So the next thing is to go to switch four and do the configuration of the port path cost. So, what are the ports that are in operation? We have port 4 and port 5. Port 4 and um, port 5. It has 5. I want to set this one as the primary. So, this is the path cost. Let me leave it as default. Then I'll go to it at 4. on bridge one so with this setup i have made but i have made rstp i have enabled it in this particular topology but that doesn't mean that it's functional so we need to test across and uh, let's test with um, vlan 100 so we are going to configure vlan 100 on all our switches that are in this network that is switch one switch two and switch four the interconnecting switches so let me, I can start from switch one. I'll go to the interface. I'll go to the VLAN. Then I'll add. Um, I like using the name test. Our ID 100. Then I'm sitting on the bridge. I'll go to switch two. I added ports to switch two. No. So what are the ports that I need to add to switch to? Port 2, 4, and 5. I don't need to configure anything special. I just leave everything as default. It has 2. Go on copy. It has 4. No need of uh, port priority or port path cost on this. And copy. It has 5. So I need to set the VLAN. Hundred and the bridge interface. Apply OK. And I go to switch three. Go the bridge. To add ports. So I'll be adding. It's at three, four, and five. Yeah. It's at three. Four. 
outside. One hundred. Now the bridge interface. Then I'll do for switch four. So, since I have a VLAN that has spanned across the interconnecting switches, for me to test, I will need to introduce an IP. So at the IP level, I will go to my switch 1, add an IP address, let's call it 10.10.10.1.24. Sitting on the VLAN that was created, and let me go to switch four. Let's call it um, 10.10.10.2. Sitting on the VLAN that was created. Okay, let's now test across using this management IP. I ping. Uh, IP on switch 4 and same VLAN so it is reachable. Can I do the same from switch 4 to switch 1? It's also reachable. So let's test for the redundancy. I'm um, going to our topology. We can decide to switch off this one. Let's take out this switch and see. Maybe the ping will still be responding. So switch 2 has been powered down, maybe for one reason or the other. So we can see that there was a kind of disconnection, a kind of a timeout. Then service has been restored um, under some milliseconds. So that means that there is redundancy. So now traffic is passing through switch 3. So even I um, on my switch 3, I can even disable, let's disable it at 3. And see maybe there will be continuity of my ping test. So interface. Let's disable port three. Let's quickly check. Yeah, there's still a continuity. But if I should take out port five on it at three, the whole network should go down. Yeah, you can see that there is no response from switch one. We go to switch four as well. The network is down totally and completely. Uh, we don't want that for our a live uh, environment. So this is how we can ensure that we are free from loops and there's also redundancy on our network from verification that we have done. So if you follow the steps correctly, um, everything should work smoothly. Um, should in case you need our contribution, maybe for the purpose of consultancy, troubleshooting, integration, implementation, or even auditing the network, you can reach us through the numbers that you are, you are seeing on your screen. I also want to appeal to us that uh, we like, we share, and we subscribe to the YouTube channel for its growth. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.